This is Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Glad you could join me on this brand new edition of New Life Program, and hopefully you will enjoy my company. I'm your host, Chileno Diam. In our program today, we are going to have much exciting items lined up for you. To kickstart the show, we'll be having Susan Apondi with the Family Life segment on a topic based on a complete marriage. Then Pastor Wahonya will also be coming in with the Bible segment on a topic known as the deceitfulness of sin. Keep it the voice of hope for you not to miss out. We are children of a king, heavenly king, heavenly king. We are children of a king, singing as we journey. Jesus Christ, our God and guide, bids us nothing terrified. Follow closely at his side, singing as we journey. We are traveling to our home, blessed home, blessed home. We are traveling to our home, singing as we journey. Toward a city out of sight, where we'll fall no shade of night. For our Savior is its light, singing as we journey. Full of joy we onward go, henward go, henward go. Full of joy we onward go, singing as we journey, singing all the journey through, singing hearts are brave and true, singing till our home we view. When God created Adam and Eve, they were meant to stay together for companionship. Thereafter, they had children who were Cain and Abel. Based on this, in order for one to have a complete marriage, a man and a woman should make their marriage complete by having children of their own in their family. Let us invite Susan Apondi to tell us more. Many couples fall in love, marry, and assume that the job is complete. Are you a victim in this area? Join me for more on this. You are tuned in to the Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. I am your presenter, Susan Apondi. They tend to feel that everything else will work out automatically. Unfortunately, this is not the truth. A successful marriage does not come spontaneously or by chance. Instead, the successful marriage involves two people working out small difficulties as well as big ones. According to Plato, a ladder can be used to illustrate the growth in the marriage relationship. That is, the two upright side of the ladder stands for the husband and wife and each rung represents something that draws and holds them together. The lowest rung is physical attraction, and the highest rung is pure love for God. Therefore, my dear listener, keep in mind that true love can only be acquired or achieved in the presence of God. Going back to the ladder, each rung depends on the other rung. Thus all becomes important, in order to maintain the unity of the ladder of a complete marriage. Remember, the main goal for marriage in marriage is a union of love in all areas of life. We are told in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, they will unite and become one flesh. That is the husband and wife. You must always admit when your marriage has a problem and seek for help to avoid unnecessary pain. This does not mean that you have failed as a Christian. Remember, there is no one perfect. 
during this time of difficulties, both of you are supposed to see a counselor. And if it happens that one partner is not willing, then the other partner should seek the assistance on his or her own. Remember God smiles to those who search for new ways to improve family relationships. Because the Christian life involves continual growth improvement in all aspects. As I had mentioned earlier, my dear listener, true love is from God, and Christ's influence in life is the only key to a successful marriage. Without a Christ-centered relationship, a couple can undergo periods of contentment and morsels of happiness. With this, we come to the end of our program today. Tune in for more programs to come. I have been your presenter, Susan Apondi. Thank you for listening. We'll be glad to receive your views, comments, and suggestions about this program. Send them to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100-Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. There's life in a look at the sacred cross. Jesus has said, look unto me, earth with its riches is only dross, bright treasure beyond through the cross I see. In a look, there's life for thee, in a look at Calvary, blessed Savior, I raised my eyes. Sweet was the smile that fell on me. Oft as the clouds of temptation rise, I look at the cross, still my strength shall be. In a look, there's life for life for thee. In a look, a I surely believe that you have been blessed by that wonderful piece of item. Pastor Wahonya is here with the Bible segment. Let us hear what he has to say on the deceitfulness of sin. Be blessed. My dear friend, let us examine today the deceitfulness of sin. In Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13, the word of God admonishes, See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin, my dear listener, is the transgression of God's law. It is enmity toward God. Sin caused angels to fall, leaving their heavenly habitation. Sin has brought ruin to this world. Because of its wickedness, it has made a graveyard out of this earth. Sin has brought sicknesses, sorrow, and death. It will bring God's wrath upon the wicked in the end. And that is why the Bible is pleading with us that none of us should be so hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. My dear friend, 
sin is not what it poses to be. There are times when it appears in the garb of innocence. Remember Eve's experience with Lucifer in the Garden of Eden. When Eve was shown that fruit, it was so innocent. When Eve listened to the serpent talking to her, the serpent was so innocent, and yet it was leading her into sin. Samson learned this hard truth of the deceitfulness of sin while he was lying on the lap of the harlot Delilah. Sometimes sin in its deceitfulness takes on false names. There are times when it makes false promises and excuses. At other times, sin hardens the heart against the voice of God. Dear friends, sin is exceedingly deceitful, such that the wisdom of the wise cannot escape it. And therefore, you will discover in life that position, your education, your wealth, or your fame cannot shield you against the deceitfulness of sin. There is only one safety against the deceitfulness of sin, and that safety and security is not found in ourselves, for we cannot face Satan on our own. Satan is the personification of sin, and therefore we cannot face him on our own. He is too experienced with the art of deception. Our security, dear friend, rests only in our abiding in Christ, and Christ also abiding in us. For without him, we can do nothing. We furthermore need to sharpen our weapons of the Holy Scriptures against Satan. And just as Jesus overcame temptation by arming himself with Scripture, you and I also need to do the same. Another weapon with which we can fight the deception of sin is through prayer. Well, let me tell you, my friend, when Satan sees a child of God kneeling, calling on the name of Jesus, talking to God about the affairs of his or her life, Satan runs away. The Holy Spirit is also our helper against the devil. For in Isaiah 59 verse 10, the Bible tells us that when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Have you taken up these defenses, my dear listener? Do not ever think that you are safe at any one moment without these defenses. You may have even been a victim of sin's deceitfulness. You may even be saying at this time that I have been so deceived that I have even gone too far that I cannot come back to Jesus. Dear listener, do not give up. Call on the Lord Jesus Christ now and him who is able to bring you back from the deceitfulness of sin, him who is able to fight Satan on your behalf, will give you victory and he will reorder your life. Hope that you have made your day wonderful. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of our program. Feel free to send us your views, comments, and suggestions about this program by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. I have been your host, Tileno Diambo. Be blessed. We are children of a king, heavenly king, heavenly king. We are children of a king, singing as we journey. 
Jesus Christ, our God and guide, bids us nothing terrified. Follow closely at his side, singing as we journey. We are traveling to our home, blessed home, blessed home. We are traveling to our home, singing as we journey. Toward a city out of sight, where will fall no shade of night. For our Savior is its light, singing as we journey. Full of joy we onward go, henward go, henward go. Full of joy we onward go, singing as we journey, singing all the journey through, singing hearts are brave and true, singing till our home we view. to speak his name. Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of these, while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stand the to help me on to God. Sure I must fight if I would reign, increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil and do the pain, supported by thy I will come again, go preach this gospel to all men. Come quickly, Lord, my soul does say, and bring that happy day. Happy day, oh happy day. sin and death be found no more on that immortal shore. Happy day, oh happy day.
On the banks of old Jordan, here gazing I stand, and earnestly longing I stretch forth my hand. Send a convoy of angels, dear Jesus, I pray. Let me join that sweet music, come take me
unto the feast of love. Yeah. 